let's suppose I just wrote a test. Let's suppose the test was out of 51. And I get 37 out of 51. How do I figure out what percent that is? You would go 37 divided by 51. What do you get on your calculators when you do that, please? Okay, if I really want to make it a percent, I can multiply it by 100, although I'm willing to bet a lot of you can just kind of move the decimal place over two spots in your head, so I'm not going to be that fussy. I'm going to give you a different way to think about that. You could say I got 72.5% on the test, or you could say I was 72.5% efficient. 100% efficient would have been perfection. I would have got every mark possible that was available to me. 0% efficient would have been I left the test blank. This is 72.5%. You can kind of think of it, Ella, as efficiency. How much you got out of what you possibly had available. You got 72.5% out of what was totally available, 100%. Believe it or not, that right there, figuring out your test percentage, which I kind of think all of you know how to do, that's also how you find efficiency in physics. So what's efficiency? If you want me to give you a definition, it's kind of how much bang you get for your buck. Uh, what fraction, what percentage of the energy that you put in or the work that you put in or the power that you put in do you get back out as useful energy or work or power? And how much of it is wasted? There's a symbol for efficiency. I actually didn't know about this until only a few years ago. So the symbol for efficiency, don't write it down yet. It looks like that. It's sort of a lowercase n with a long droopy tail. So the symbol for efficiency is that. You can write that down. In case you're wondering, this is the Greek letter eta. And I'm a nerd, so I'll probably use that, because anytime I get a chance to use a Greek letter that's also in a brief, Casey, my little math nerd heart, does go pitter-pat. But if you look at my answer keys and my notes, because I only found this out a few years ago, often I just wrote as my abrev for efficiency, EFF, as an abrev for the word efficiency. So you may see some of my answer keys that just write that. I'm not going to be fussy. You can use either. What are the units for efficiency? What are the units for your test score that we just figured out? So efficiency is a percentage. And Alex, while you're there, can you shut that door? Thanks. Efficiency is a percentage. What's the equation? I'm going to give you an equation and then I'm going to give you a dumber way to remember it because the equation has always kind of confused me. But here's the equation. Efficiency, that little funky symbol there, is equal to power out divided by power in. Or the work you get out divided by the work you put in. Or the energy you get out divided by the energy you put in. And then times 100 to make it a percent. Can you see how this is kind of like figuring out your test percentage on a test? Well, you had the possibility to get 51 marks. You got 37 out. That's your efficiency. It's out over in. It's out over in. It's out over. You don't need to memorize that. There's a problem with that. When we get to electricity next year in Physics 12, the power in comes from an outlet. 
And so, Bryce, it's very easy to get the in and out mixed up. In fact, I know there's a question that I do in Physics 12 where I'll often have somebody tell me a light bulb is 140% efficient. And I say, no, that violates the laws of the universe. So here's Mr. Duick's easier version. Efficiency is always going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. But make sure you match units. In other words, make sure, Bryce, it's joules divided by joules, or make sure it's watts divided by watts, but don't go watts divided by joules. What I'm really saying is you can't get more than perfect on a test. You can't get more than 100% efficient. In fact, I wrote here, efficiency will always be less than 100% unless you plan on winning a Nobel Prize. You can't be more than 100% efficient. There's a fancy way we say that, Madison. We say you can't have efficiency more than unity, more than one if you change 100% into a decimal. You cannot. If you could... That would solve almost all of our current issues on the planet. You can't, but Emily, if you did somehow invent a machine that was more than 100% efficient, that gave us free energy, within about three or four years, you'd be able to buy Bill Gates and Elon Musk pretty quickly. You'd have a lot of money. Because if you give us free, clean, unlimited energy, just even with our current level of technology, we can engineer our way out of most issues. Okay, we can now take care of the global warming issue because we're not going to be burning fossil fuels anymore. And if we drop that down to near zero, hey, great, that's going to dramatically cut back on greenhouse emissions. Oh, we got a food shortage? You give me unlimited energy. I can run daylight lights at nighttime all day long, all night long, and I can probably get my crop production to increase dramatically and take care of the food shortage. This is a lot lot I can do if you give me free unlimited energy. There's a lot I can do. Block H when you're done, kiddo. Thank you. Okay. But unfortunately, you cannot. The laws of the universe dictate that you always will always, you'll always lose some energy in any kind of a transfer process. It will never be more than 100% efficient. So a typical lighthouse bulb transforms energy at a rate of 60 watts. 60 joules per second. Most of the electrical energy coming out of the plug, though, is transformed into heat instead of light, especially if it's the old style incandescent bulbs, the ones that get really, really hot. So only about three watts of power are light. About 57 watts, 57 joules per second, goes into heat. So an incandescent bulb would only be about 5% efficient. I would say I get 3 watts out divided by 60 watts in times 100. What do you get? Is it 5% efficient? Even? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a kettle, an electric kettle, might transform electrical energy into heat at a rate of 1,500 watts, 1,500 joules per second. It's giving off a lot of heat as well, so it's not very efficient. But we're always trying to build devices that are more efficient, that can do the same amount of power or the same amount of work with less input. Example one. A 255 kilogram mass is being lifted. You know what? I would underline the word lifted. That's a trigger word in my mind. Straight up at a constant speed by an electric motor. It takes the motor four seconds to lift the mass to a height of 12.5 meters. Okay. Joanna, what's A want me to find? And I think we're lifting. How do I figure out the work done by lifting? That's MGH. So it's going to be 255 times 9.8, times 12.5. 255 kilograms, that's very heavy. None of you could lift 255 kilograms. It's right around 600 pounds, okay? 12.5 meters, it's about four stories. 
How much energy, how much work will that take? Got a typo, Mr. Duick. You missed the 12. I get 31,237.5. I'm going to store this on my calculator. I'm going to write 31,200, but I'm going to use this later. 31,200. Uh, what are the units for work? Joules. B. Bryce, what does B want me to find? Power. What's my equation for power on my formula sheet, which you have in front of you by now? Our symbol for power was capital P. Yep. Work over time. How much work? I'm going to write 31,200, but you know I'm using my answer button on my calculator. How much time goes by in the question, Bryce? Okay. Uh, answer button divided by 4. How many watts is this motor? I get 7,809. I'll call it 7,810, but I'll store this on my calculator. Bryce, power is measured in watt? Okay, that's how much power we got out. But let's suppose we have a meter on the plug and we find that the motor is using 12 kilowatts. 12 kilowatts, how many watts is 12 kilowatts? Ruby, how many? Did you really have to go 12 times 1,000 on your calculator? No. Yeah, okay. So let's cross out 12 kilowatts. We'll 12,000 watts. We'll do our usual quick unit conversion on the fly in the question because we're lazy but organized. Okay. That's how much we used. Sadie, what does C want me to find? Okay, so efficiency, it's going to be, I guess, power out divided by power in. How did I know to go with power? Because I got watts here and I got watts here. It's tough for me to figure out which one is the out, which one is the in. But here's what I said. It's always the smaller number divided by the, what's the smaller number, 12,000 or 7,810? Okay, 7,000. I'm going to use my answer button there, though, Sadie. I'll write 7,810 divided by 12,000 and then times 100. So I'm going to go answer button divided by 12,000 times 100. Sadie, what's the efficiency of this motor? Yep. Is that very good? Actually, yeah. Electric motors are way, way better. In fact, if they even if they hadn't told me the word electric motor there, as soon as I saw this 65% efficient, I would have said, hey, I know that's not an internal combustion engine. Internal combustion engines, they're only about, oh, I oh, just lost that, Mr. Duke. They're only about 15, 20% efficient. Where do con internal combustion engines, gasoline engines, where do they lose most of their energy? Heat. They get really hot, and that's wasted energy. Also, can you hear them from a long ways away? Sound is a form of energy. They're losing energy to sound. You can hear a motor running from like kilometers away sometimes. So internal combustion engines, Sarah, not good. This is why even a hybrid that has a part gas engine but has part electric engine gets way better gas mileage is way more efficient than an internal combustion engine alone example two a girl pushes a 300 newton box along the floor for a distance of four meters the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.33 she then lifts the box straight up Josh, what's A want me to find? Minimum amount of work. Well, first of all, work is what times what? Yeah. 
It's also the area underneath the force versus distance graph. Do you see a graph in this question at all? So we're going to ignore that. So, okay. Do you see a distance? Yeah. Do you see a force? I got gotcha. you. This is a tricky question because I need to visualize what's going on. What else did this question give me, Josh? Read me the second sentence, starting with the word the. Give me a mute. You know what a good habit is whenever they give me a coefficient of friction? You know what this is a good job for? <coughs> and I'm going to show you that that 300, that 3 times 10 to the second, is not the force we're going to use. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here's the box. Josh, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. How big is gravity? Hey, I think that's this. They didn't say the girl pushed with 300 newtons. They said the girl pushes a 300 newton box. You know what? I think that's gravity. What else, Josh? Go systematically. Yes, there is a force applied. Go systematically. Okay, and I can tell you exactly how big the normal force is. It's also 300 newtons because I don't see any extra vertical forces. Now what else? Yes? Good. What else? Which way? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as F applied? You ready? If it was smaller, can you read to me part A again? What is the, what's the minimum amount of work that I can do? exactly match F applied. If it's smaller, I'm doing extra work because now the box is going to start to accelerate. But if I exactly match F applied, that's the minimum amount of work. I'm keeping it going at a steady speed. You agree with that? All right. Which way is this box moving in your mind? To the, I'm looking for the stress letter R. Okay, which force is pointing to the right? So I'm going to first of all say, I think the work is that. You okay with that? I don't know, F applied. Oh, but look, 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 look. I don't know the force the same size as F applied if I'm doing the minimum amount of work. Which force is the same size as F applied if I'm doing the minimum amount of work? Ah, I can now say, you know what? I can't find F applied, but I can find friction times distance. You okay with that next little aha moment? Friction, Josh, is what times what? I don't know that I'm... Wait a minute, I do. I figured it out while I was doing my free body diagram. How big is the normal force exactly in Newtons? Okay. Now, do I need to let this be negative because friction and distance are in opposite direction? No, 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 because actually I'm finding F applied, which is in the correct direction. It's just I can't find it, but I know it's the same size as friction. So I'm not going to invoke the they're in the opposite directions. One's positive, one's negative. I'm just going to crunch the numbers now. Uh, Josh, what's mu? Sorry? 0.33. What's the normal force? 300. 3 times 10 to the 2. Distance. What do you get? Sorry? 118.8? Is that right? I don't think that seems wonky to me. So 0.33 times 400 times 4 can't be what you typed on your calculator. That can't be what you typed on your calculator. So you need to figure out what you where you zigged, right? Did you figure it out? Good. What do you get? Okay. Jules. Why are we wrong? Or why are we not finished? 
Oh, she's also, we should have also, Josh said, lifts? Yes? So we also, I guess I'm going to call this the work done uh, by pushing the applied force. So she did 396 joules of work sliding the box across the floor. And now let's figure out the work done in, uh, how do I find work done in lifting? I think we can kind of, okay. What's M in kilograms? What's M in kilograms? That's kilograms? That's a bad guess. What's M in kilograms? The answer you're looking for is, they didn't tell me. What's M in kilograms? Okay? we got to have confidence now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that 300, though, Josh? What's that 300? Oh, I erased it. I didn't want to do that. What's that 300? You know what? I'm going to go... Three, no! MG is 300. Why would I divide by 9.8 and then times by 9.8 right away? That's MG is 300 times H. I don't need to divide by 9.8 and then multiply by 9.8. Go ahead. It's not wrong, but why? They gave me MG. Redeem yourself, Josh. Type that one into your calculator correctly. 3 times 1 point, 300 times 1.2. 360. Okay. So she did 396 joules, Casey, pushing this across the floor. Gosh, 360 joules of work lifting it up. Josh, what did this question want me to find? No, no, A. We're still doing A. I guess the total work is going to be 396. 360 plus 360. That's a terrible plus sign. Which is what? Should be 700 and something, I think. 756? Units? Yep. Okay. That's how much work, Emily, she did on the box. But it turns out her body burned more energy than 756 joules. Emily, how much energy did her body use according to part B? How efficient is this? So I guess this wants us to find efficiency. Efficiency is going to be, well, it looks like I'm going to use this number here and this number here. They're both in joules, so I made sure the units match. It's going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. It's going to be 756 divided by 1,200 and then times 100 to make it a percent. Sixty-three even? Oh, that's a fluke. Where did the other 37% of go? Uh, her body was giving off heat. That was wasted energy. And that's where most of it goes. Your body throw off a lot of heat. You've all been in a crowded room and notice how quickly the temperature in a crowded room increases, right? Our bodies are not terribly efficient. Is that all right, Paul? Okay. Next page. How many of you have ever used one of those stair climbers in a gym or, or some kind of exercise machine? Could be riding a bike, could be, okay, elliptical, okay. How many of you, if you were using those machines, the machine told you how many calories you had burned in that session? Uh, I'm going to explain to you why all of those machines, in terms of the calories burned, are garbage. Doesn't mean they're bad exercise, but if they're trying to tell you how much you did, Sarah, actually, total garbage. So you ready? On a stair climber at a gym, a 58 kilogram person lifts. You know what? That's a trigger word. I'm thinking we may have some MGH in our future. Yes. Their center of mass up 18 centimeters. Ooh. Do I do physics with centimeters? 18 centimeters. How many meters? Now, you can do a full unit conversion. Write down what they gave me and walk through that. Or... I know one meter is about this big. 
I know a centimeter, 18 centimeters is about this big. It's about half a ruler, because I know a ruler is about 30. So how do I change 18 centimeters into meters? It's something to do with a 100. Okay. So on your calculator or in your head, 18 centimeters divided by 100. 0.18 meters. Okay, Diego, let's keep reading. Uh, they lift their center of mass 0.18 meters with each step. If they take 500 steps in 10 minutes, nice try, Duick. 10 minutes. How many seconds? How do I convert minutes to seconds? One minute is how many seconds? Two minutes is how many seconds? How would you turn a two into 120? I think it's times by 60. So 10 times 60, really? 600. Calc it's 10 times 60. You add a zero. I know. And their muscles are 20% efficient then. Okay. Here we go. Jada, what's A want me to find? Uh, Read the whole phrase. Say it again, this is important. So it's not asking me to find work. What's it asking me to find? What's the rate of work? So boys and girls, stay where you are, but look up. Let's cast our minds back. A scant 24 hours to last day when we looked at power, and I think we learned that power... Oh, what was the very, very first phrase? Uh, Jada, can you read to me this first line right here? Ah. What's this asking me to find? Power. I just phrased it a bit differently to see who's paying attention. Okay. How do I find power? Yep, there's an equation. Work over time. Uh, what work? You know what? I, th I think it's the work done in lifting. Uh, Jada, how do I figure out the work done in lifting? Over time. Let's do a quick check. Did they give me the mass in kilograms? Did they give me 9.8? Okay, what's the mass in kilograms, Jada? Good. Little g? 9.8, right? What's the height? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not 0.18. Sarah, did you have a suggestion? I thought I saw your lips moving with a clever answer. Oh. What? Casey, did you see it? Yeah. What? It's 0.18 times? 500. Yes, 500 steps. Good. And Jada, what's the time? Divide by 600. Okay. Now, exercise machines, instead of doing the energy units in joules, they do the energy units in calories, which is the imperial unit for energy. Okay but it, they would do a similar calculation here. This part is accurate, but I'm going to also show you why. It's garbage. Uh, what would you get? 85.3. Anybody else? 85.3? 85.3 watt? Thank you for picking up the hint. Okay. So you're generating 85.3 watts, or if you take that number and you multiply 85.3 times 600, you can say, ooh, I burned 51,200 joules of energy. But you did not. You burned far more than that. Ruby, what's B want me to find? The rate at which the person uses food energy. It still wants me to find power. Which power? Ruby, what haven't I used yet that this question gave me? 
the 20 percent efficiency all of us let's write down efficiency equals power out divided by power in I think this 85.3 that's the power out I think this is asking me to find what that is the power in Oh, got a customer coming in here. Let me pause the video for a second. So, I want to find this. How the heck am I going to find this? Well, where is P in right now? On the... Bleh! Wait a minute. We've seen this little dance before, I think. We're going to multiply this to the top and divide efficiency to the bottom. I think I, think I can say this. The power that this person put in is going to be the power the machine set out divided by the efficiency. What's the power we got out? 85.3. What's the efficiency? Not 20. What did you always have to do with a percent before you did math with it? Make it a decimal again, right? So divided by 0.2. What do you get? Use your answer button because I don't think it was exactly 85.3. Maybe it was. 426.3. I'll call it 426 powers measured in watt. Okay. In other words, this person is using 426 joules up every second. So who's been on, on some kind of an exercise machine that displays calories? Okay, if that, first of all, do you notice we needed the objects, the person's mass to get an accurate calculation? If the machine didn't ask you for your mass, okay, that's garbage. But you also need to know a person's metabolic efficiency to give you an accurate number. It doesn't know that. So those numbers, you can use them as, I don't even like saying rough guidelines they're there to motivate you. Oh, I can see I'm at 994. I'll keep going till I reach a thousand calories. Okay, that's a valid use for it. But I'm telling you, you did not burn a thousand calories. You did not. They're nonsense. Okay. Could you close that door, Riley? Thank you. I think one more, we're done. An internal combustion engine, the gasoline engine is approximately 18% efficient. What this means is only about 18% of the chemical energy from the gasoline is actually converted into forward motion. The rest is wasted. If a 200 horsepower engine is used for two hours, huh, hmm. Paul, what's A want me to find? Okay. Well, what was the power of this motor in horsepower? Well, keep reading. What was the power of this engine in horsepower? They told me. Thank you. Let's write down what they gave me. Paul, where am I going to put horsepower in my conversion factor? On the top or on the bottom? Yeah. So watts on the top. And I guess the 750 is going to go on the top. So am I going to times by 750 or divide by 750? Okay. And I get 150,000. watts of power. Okay. B. B. Aryan, what does B want me to find? In what? How much motion energy in what? Units. You know what? I think it wants me to find work. Um, ooh, what's my equation for for uh, work and power? No. Power is work 
over time. What does this want me to find? Aryan, what does this want me to find? How much motion energy in joules? Which of these is measured in joules? What does it want me to find? Help me out, folks. What do we want to find? Diego, what? Watts? No. Work. Okay. This W is work. It wants us to find work. Okay? How would I get the work by itself, Aryan? How would I move the T over? So work is going to be power times time. It's going to be 150,000 times, oh, yeah. Times two? Why can't I use times two? Why can't I use this for time? Hours. Hours. So, you know what? T equals two. How do I can, oh, does anybody remember how many seconds in one hour? Casey, you're on a roll today. So, you know what? The time is going to be 7,200. What do you get? I get a one, a zero, an eight, and then is it seven zeros after that? I'm going to write this in scientific notation because all those zeros, 1.08. Times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Joules. Is that correct? No, it's not. For a candy, can anybody tell me why this is wrong? Arya, can you read to me part B again, starting with the word how? How much motion energy for a candy? Can anybody tell me why this can't be the amount of motion energy? Yeah. We do have time, 7,200 seconds. Anybody tell me why this can't be the amount of motion energy? Okay. Madison, can you read to me the first sentence starting with the word and? Loud and proud. And. Internal. Just read the first sentence. A gasoline engine. Keep reading. Is. What does that mean? This means that only, keep reading. Okay. That's the total energy this motor burned. Not all of that went into motion. What percent went into motion? Ah. Okay. How can we figure out then how much of this went into motion? What percent? How do you find 18% of this? Oh, it's math eight review, I know. How do you find 18% of this? So let's make a little note. We want 18% of 1.08 times 10 to the ninth. Um, give you a little trick worth having in your back pocket, okay? In math, the word of, in English, what? Loud and proud, what? Almost always. I have a math degree, and I actually spent a couple of days as a teacher obsessively trying to find in the literature. There's one place where the word of doesn't mean times, and that's when you say three to the power of five. Then it's an exponent, because it's to the power of. If the of occurs in that phrase, it's an exponent. Everywhere else, and I've looked, everywhere else where I found a word problem that had the word of with numbers, what does it mean? So the first thing I'm going to do is this. Whenever I'm doing math with a percent, OK? 
Okay? A little math eight here. You had a good math teacher if they taught you that. Of means multiply. I'm going to go 0.18 times answer button because I don't feel like retyping all those zeros. And I get 1.944 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1.944. Alex, is that okay? You're back with me? Because you weren't here. Oh, Alex, what does C want me to find? So there's two ways that I could do that. I could go how much energy I started with, which was 1.08 times 10 to the ninth, minus how much went into moving the car, which is my current answer, and it would tell me that. Or I could do it as a percentage. If 18% Madison went into good energy, what percent was wasted? 72%. So I could go like this, 0.72 times 1.08 times 10 to the ninth. And I get, did it 0.72? 0 0.82. I did the math wrong, Mr. Duick. Dumb. 100 minus 18 is 0.82. Can't believe I blew my punchline because those two numbers, the 885600 and that, were supposed to be the same. So you can either just subtract, and that's probably what I would do. I would probably go 1.08 times 10 to the ninth, take away 1.944 times 10 to the eighth, because I would have had those numbers sitting on my calculator. But we wasted. 8856. So 8.856 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 joules. Really? You're yawning? Yeah, it's a little dry. But this is efficiency. Yeah. No, I'm not done yet, but you can in a little bit. What's your homework? You can try number one. You can try number two. Skip three, do four. Five is good. Skip six, do seven. Skip eight, do nine, or as I like to say, yeah, nine. Ten is good. Eleven is good. And then fifteen, so I skipped twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. <laughs> 